The Detroit Lions have had 10 training camp practices up to this point. Now let's take the time to highlight some of the biggest risers and fallers currently in camp. What's going on guys? Welcome to the Pride of Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko and on today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Lions training camp to this point. And I'm gonna talk about 10 players that I believe have either risen or fallen to this point in camp. Now, let's get something clear right now. My list is probably gonna be different from your list. There's probably gonna be a couple guys that are missing from this list. And let's talk about that upfront. First of all, there will be no Aiden Hutchinson. There will be no Amon Ross St. Brown and there will be no Jared Goff. The guys that are kind of already locked into starting spots I'm not going to take the time to highlight most of those guys we've covered through training camp observations. You guys know that Aiden has been a monster so far in camp. We know how dominant Amon Ra has been, and we know about how consistent Jared Goff has been. And on the defensive side, I've talked at an extensive amount about CJ Gardner-Johnson and a few other players on the defensive side of the football. In this video, I kind of want to just focus on guys that I didn't necessarily expect to have good camps to this point. Some of them I was probably hopeful for, but then there's a couple on this list that really did catch me by surprise. So without further ado, let's kick it off with some of the guys that I believe have risen to the challenge up to this point in camp. So let's kick things off with my number one riser so far through camp right now. And I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I cheated a little bit on this one because I really just couldn't pick one. And so I had to go with the Lions top rookies that they drafted in this recent draft class. And I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, Jack Campbell, Brian Branch, and Broderick Martin. Now, unfortunately, Hendon Hooker didn't make this list because obviously we all know that he's dealing with an injury. But the other five guys that I listed off have been having really good camps. Most of them are taking and splitting, you know, first and second team reps. And if we're looking at guys specifically like Broderick Martin, he's a player that I was hoping would have a good camp, but definitely caught me by surprise with how well he's been doing up to this point. And then you have guys like Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta on the offensive side of the football who have just been fairly consistent throughout camp and showcasing the abilities that got them drafted in the first place, whether that be run after catch ability, whether that be big play ability, or just simply taking the time to learn from the vets and show consistency from practice to practice. And then I got to talk about Jack Campbell and Brian Branch, two other guys on the defensive side that have definitely seen a large share of their snap counts increase with the first team. Now, Aaron Glenn has already made a point to, to state to the media, like, hey, not to get too caught up into where guys are repping. And that's a fair you know, criticism and a fair warning to give out to most of us covering the team at this point. But when you're looking at how frequently the likes of Jack Campbell and the likes of Brian Branch are being used on the defense in lieu of other veteran options, it can't help but give you that type of encouragement that like, you know what, the rookies are not just, you know, holding their own. They're actually impressing this coaching staff and putting themselves in position to actually contribute once the season kicks off. And Dan Campbell spoke about this when meeting with the media, that one of the things that he just wants to see from the rookies is that they're getting better each and every day and that they're not becoming too overwhelmed. Well, the five rookies that I just mentioned and I just talked about have basically been doing that in spades to this point. Another riser that I have on this list is, again, a player that I didn't necessarily expect to be performing this well is Charles Harris. Now, Charles Harris was the DN that the Lions went with opposite Aiden Hutchinson last year when they kicked off the season, and he was getting a large share of the snap count prior to him being injured. But a couple injuries here and there really kind of kept him out of the lineup and kept him from really showcasing his ability that got him paid going into the last season. Now that Charles Harris is healthy, the Lions have not shied away from once again putting Charles Harris in that same role opposite Hutch and even expanding his role into the Sam linebacker position, which is a clear sign of how much they value him and how much they want him on the field, regardless of the front that they're rolling with. It was fairly obvious that once the Lions restructured Harris's deal, that he was obviously going to have some type of role on this defense, but the fact that he's getting those starting reps over the likes of Kaminsky, who, you know, served admirably in Harris's absence, or Pascal, who was a younger option, or even James Houston, that was literally lighting up the league last year as a pass rusher, did catch me by surprise. But at the same time, it shows just how much they believe in Charles Harris and how much he's progressed now that he's finally healthy. Now, the next player that I have on my list whose arrow has been trending up throughout camp might catch a couple people off guard. 
but I'm going to give this to Jamar Jefferson. Now, Jamar Jefferson is definitely in the fight of his life for a roster spot currently, but to this point, he's been doing all of the right things. We know that the Lions feel fairly comfortable and confident in his ability to run the ball, but the area that Jefferson has improved on the most that has really caught my attention is his willingness and his effectiveness in special teams. This coaching staff has always kind of stressed that when it comes down to making decisions and making those final cuts, they love to look at, again, who they believe can contribute in that area of you know the game, specifically talking about special teams. And if Jefferson is showing this new commitment to that phase of the game and actually performing very well, showcasing great ability, agility, speed, and just understanding of what he's supposed to do in those situations, it definitely gives you this feeling that, look, if the if there's a tough decision to be made between him and Craig Reynolds, maybe the Lions might choose to go with Jefferson just because of what they believe they can get out of him from a special teams angle. Now, it's worth pointing out that Craig Reynolds is still getting those RB3 reps, but you have to believe that if Jefferson is continuing to improve and showing that he can actually contribute on special teams, it might narrow that gap between him and Reynolds once the Lions have to start making those final cuts. Now, another player that we have to talk about as far as trending in the right direction has to be UDFA Starling Thomas. Now, going into training camp, I wasn't super confident that many UDFAs would be able to make a roster, just considering how deep the talent pool has gotten in Detroit with the recent moves that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have made to improve the team overall. But Starling Thomas has definitely been proving me wrong. A lot of this has to do with the fact that Emmanuel Mosley is still dealing with his ACL injury and is currently unavailable to practice. And Thomas is taking full advantage of that, showcasing great uh, competitiveness, speed, and just willingness to learn at the cornerback position. From the reports that have come out of camp, he definitely has the mindset and personality to fit well with this culture that Dan Campbell is trying to breed. He very much re reminds a lot of people of Jerry Jacobs and Aaron Glenn acknowledged just as much during his most recent media availability. If Thomas can continue to contribute both on the defensive end and continue to do what he's doing on special teams, where he's continuously repping as a gunner and showing great ability there as well, it may not be a huge surprise when the Lions start to cut down to that 53-man roster and Thomas is one of the few players that actually make the cut. And my final player that I have in my risers category has to be wide receiver Denzel Mims. Now, the last time Brad Holmes traded for a wide receiver, it didn't necessarily go the way many of us thought it would. Now, Trinity Benson has still been around and found ways to, you know, find playing time with the Lions. But considering what Brad Holmes had given up for that trade, I think some of us are still somewhat disappointed that Trinity Benson hasn't quite delivered in terms of what Brad Holmes thought he could. Well, that doesn't so far seem to be the case with Denzel Mims. Since being acquired from the Jets, Denzel Mims has not only showed the ability on the field, but also showed the mentality to actually do what is asked of him. If that means playing special teams, he's willing to play special teams. If that means going out and blocking people, he's going out and doing that as well. And then when he is being utilized in the passing game, he's excelling there too. I was someone who was very excited about the possibility of what Denzel Mims could be, but I wasn't trying to get my hopes up too high just because he had the size and the measurables to make you think that he could excel at this position. But so far throughout camp, he's been putting up enough good performances to have you believe that he's definitely leading the pack in that wide receiver five, wide receiver six spot. And everyone else is definitely chasing behind him. Now, unfortunately, if there are guys that are trending up, there also have to be guys that are trending the opposite direction. And there's a couple guys that have stood out to me so far throughout camp. And while I'm not saying that they all are necessarily, you know, guaranteed cuts or won't make the final roster, their performances so far have been a little disappointing in my opinion. And we're going to start off with a player that has been with the Lions for a while now and is still kind of middling around with the third team, and that being Logan Stenberg. Logan Stenberg was drafted by the previous regime, and Dan Campbell and his staff have kept him around up until this point, hoping to still be able to get something out of him and develop him into a quality guard option, either as a starter or just simply as a rotational piece. But at this point in camp, Logan is still pretty much repping with the third team and not getting a lot of opportunities with the second or the first team. In fact, when they're choosing to elevate someone up, it's usually Colby Sorosdal or Awasika in those positions. With Stenberg basically going into his fourth year, you have to believe that the clock is definitely ticking on his time in Detroit. And you have to believe that Stenberg is gonna have to start putting together better performances if he expects to lock down a position on this final 53-man roster. Now, another player that's in a similar boat as Stenberg is Julian Okwara. Again, another player that's going into his fourth year, third year with Campbell and his staff, and hasn't quite stood out in the way that, you know, many people probably thought he would, especially myself included. As someone who really likes Julian Aquara, 
I was really hoping that he would finally give the Lions a reason to actually keep him or at least make a tough decision somewhere else on the roster in order to try to, you know, retain him. But so far, like Dan Campbell kind of described with Julian, he's only been showing up in flashes here and there. And like I mentioned earlier, with Charles Harris now taking reps at Sam Linebacker, it really cuts into all the different places where Julian could be utilized on this defense. The Lions still have James Houston, and if a decision had to be made today on who the Lions would keep today between Houston and Okwara, no one would be surprised if they chose Houston at this point. Again, there's still plenty of training camp left. They still have joint practice and they still have the preseason. But Julian definitely sounds like someone who has a lot of ground to make up if he wants to make a really good impression on this coaching staff and give them a reason to keep him once they start making final cuts. Another player that is trending down that I expected to actually be, you know, performing much better in camp at this point is Halapoli Vati Vatai. Now, we all know about the back injury that Vatai suffered last year that kept him out for the entire season for the Lions. And going into this year, there was a lot of promise that, you know what, he would be better now that he actually sat that time out. And from the way he was talking, he was feeling pretty good as well. But since sustaining an injury in training camp, Vatai's kind of been in and out of the lineup and has kind of seen his first team reps start to decline a bit as Graham Glasgow has taken more and more first team reps. Now, we could definitely infer this as a way that the Lions are just trying to keep Vatai a little bit more fresh so that he can actually contribute and compete once preseason games come around. But you can't deny the fact that Vitae losing snaps to Graham isn't somewhat an indictment on how likely he is to hold down a starting spot once the Lions start to make their cuts. I'm not saying that Big B won't make the final cut because, again, the Lions definitely love him and they definitely feel like he's a culture fit and he gels well with the starting lineup. But if we're talking about trending down as far as going from a starter to more of a reserve role... Big V definitely falls into that category right now. Now, another player that seems to be going backwards a little bit based on where they were at the beginning of training camp is wide receiver Antoine Green. Now, Antoine Green was definitely someone that a lot of us were excited about, the potential of him becoming and being in that race for the wide receiver five, wide receiver six race with the likes of Denzel Mims, Dylan Drummond, and Trinity Benson. And once some injury started occurring, you definitely started to feel like, you know what, Antoine Green may be able to take advantage of these things. But that really hasn't been the case for Green at this point in camp. While he used to see more reps with the first and second team, those reps are now being eaten up by both Denzel Mims and Dylan Drummond. Again, much like Okwara and Stenberg, I still believe there's plenty of time for Green to kind of showcase his ability and really shine once the Lions transition into joint practices and preseason games. But considering where I thought Antoine Green would be or where he was at the beginning of training camp and where he currently is now, it is a bit of a decline. And the final player that I have on my list that is actually trending in the wrong direction is Christian Covington. Now, when Christian Covington was first signed, I made a point to keep my expectations relatively low because I really very much felt that he was just a camp bot. But going into OTAs and minicamp, Christian Covington was getting a lot of reps. And obviously, this kind of goes back to once again, Aaron Glenn's point about, you know, where guys are repping not mattering, he was getting a lot of work with the first team. And so going into camp, I thought, well, maybe Christian Covington has something. They've kept him this long. Maybe he's got to be showing something in order to retain his position at this point. Well, so far in training camp, there hasn't been a lot of, you know, buzz about Christian Covington, neither in a good light or a bad light. But again, as a guy that was relatively on the bubble going into training camp, you would love to hear some positive news about him if he was making an impact. And the fact that there's basically been silence is kind of a sign to me that he's not, you know, impressing either the coaching staff and definitely not standing out to the media in a way where they feel like they are compelled to write about him. Once again, the defensive line is a unit, though, that needs depth. And so once the Lions kind of start to transition into those joint practices, once they start transitioning over into preseason, it's going to be really interesting to see how Christian Covington starts to stand out and if he can make some noise as far as an you know, interior pass rusher or as a run defender. He's definitely going to have some competition with both Benito Jones and Levi Onzerike, but as a veteran in the league, Covington might have something left in the tank that he hasn't quite yet shown this coaching staff to this point. So guys, that's going to do it for my list of risers and fallers to this point in training camp. Let me know in the comment section below if you believe that there's anybody that I left off this list that you would have as a riser or a faller or if there's anyone that you would disagree with me on in my list. Also, if you're new to the Pride of Detroit YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you can be notified anytime we upload any new content to our channel. So once again, guys, I'm Miko here with Pride of Detroit. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.